Hey what's going on guys then my for simple snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial under operating systems in memory management and today we are going to be taking a look at what is a page fault and how to perform page fault handling so in the previous video of this playlist we saw what is paging and we took a very detailed description about paging why we need paging and the working of paging so if you have missed any of the video and if you don't know what paging is you definitely need to see that video first before you actually understand this video because this is sort of like the part 2 of paging wherein a page fault happens and how we handle page fault anyways assuming that you already know what paging is let us consider that we have a process whose name is process a and it is divided into four pages p1 p2 p3 and p4 okay so since process a is very big and our page size is small compared to process a we have to divide this process in four pages and we already know in paging the virtual memory is divided into pages and the main memory is divided into frames and pages is equal to frames right okay so what happens in a page fault so basically a page fault happens when a desired page which is about to be executed or is required is not there in the main memory but it is there in the secondary storage or the virtual memory okay so that's what paging helps us achieve right it it creates some space in the secondary storage which can be used to store some pages of certain processes if the main memory gets full right so that's how we expand the main memory by using some virtual memory basically it is using the secondary storage itself right so now let's consider this situation our cpu is over here and it is executing p2 that is page number 2 of this process a and there's an instruction inside this page p2 which is load x now let's assume that this load x basically requires p3 okay process 3 so the CPU will initiate a request of P3, page 3. So our CPU doesn't know that P3 is not there in the main memory, right? So somebody has to tell the CPU that it is not there in the main memory, right? So this is done by the MMU, that is memory management unit. So MMU will take P3 and look into the page table of process A. So every process has its own page table. We already know this. So this is for process A. So inside this page table, the memory management unit will see okay it's p3 so it will directly go to the entry where p3 is there so this p1 p2 p3 and p4 will already be there and corresponding to p3 it will see what is the frame number so this first column is page number and second column is frame number now over here you can see for p3 it sees that there is an invalid entry that is i bit it is also known as invalid bit which essentially means that p3 that is page 3 of process a is not there in the main memory so you can see we have p1 over here so this is p1 this is p2 just below it and then we directly have p4 we don't have p3 so now what happens is so this was step number one that is looking up in the page table so step number two is a page trap signal is generated so basically what happened here is a page fault happened so we just saw what is a page fault that is p3 is not there in the main memory which is a page fault and we just found that out by using the page table so a page fault has happened so i hope you know what is a page fault now how do we handle this so this entire diagram is basically the page fault handling diagram so we are at step number two now so this is where a page trap signal is generated so a trap is basically a high priority signal in operating systems which the os cannot preempt okay so whenever a signal which is a trap signal is generated the operating system has to compulsory look and resolve that signal or resolve that query so just remember that a trap is a very high priority signal which the os cannot ignore okay so a trap is generated and sent to the os with all these informations that p3 is not there in the page table of this process a so now the os has to find the page on the secondary storage which is used as virtual memory so using this paging scheme we have used some portion of the secondary storage as virtual memory right and we have divided it into pages so this is page for one slot so this is the second slot and so on and so forth so somewhere on this virtual memory we have p3 so operating system goes on to the secondary storage and finds out p3 is over here and then step number four is to bring back the missing page into main memory into a free frame okay so now the operating system has to check whether there is some empty frame in the main memory and depending upon where the frame is free this p3 is being loaded over here okay so now p3 is going to be loaded into f34 because f34 is free you can see this cross mark which means that this much amount of memory is not free over here 
and directly the frame number 34 is free. So since this frame size and this page size is the same, it will be directly loaded into this frame number 34. Okay. Now you realize that you can see that P1, P2 are right below each other in the memory at frame number F7 and F8. However, P3, which comes after P2 is being loaded at F34, which is not contiguous, right? So this is how paging technique helps us achieve non-contiguous memory allocations. So you can see that it is not needed that P1, P2, P3, P4 be in line. So you can see after P2, we directly have P4, but P3 is loaded somewhere over here. And the reason why we can do this is because by the use of page table. So we don't need to have P1, P2, P3, P4 back to back or contiguous because in the page table, we are directly storing where exactly P1 is, where exactly P2 is, where exactly P3 is, right? So we are directly having the address and this is why page table acts as an index. So for step number four, what we did is we loaded P3 in the main memory. And now for step number five, we have to update the page table. So by updating page table, what we're going to do is we're going to be adding an entry over here and that entry is going to be the frame number in which P3 is loaded. So this is now going to be F34. So step number five is complete. And last step of this entire page fault handling system is going to be six step, which is restart the instruction, which means that CPU is going to be again restarting load X and now it's going to find P3 in the memory because it is found over here in the page table. So now CPU will start executing page number three. So this is the entire page fault handling scenario and all the steps which are there, which I performed when a page fault happens. Now note that if this P3 would already be located over here. So let's assume that P3 is already here and not here. That is in F34 page fault would have not occurred at all, right? CPU would have come to this instruction load X, which would want P3. So the MMU would look up P3 in page table. It would come to this location P3. It would say, okay, I have found the frame that is frame 34. So directly from step number one, step number six would be achieved because we've already found the frame in memory, right? So P3 is already there in frame number F34. So it is already there in memory. So all these steps are not required. That is step number two, three, four, five. So directly the MMU will inform CPU that it is there in the memory at frame 34 and CPU will directly come from frame eight to frame 34 to perform or execute P3. Okay. So this was page fault and page fault handling and by understanding this, let's try out a small numerical, which usually comes in exams and it is associated with page fault only. So this is some details regarding page fault. So point number one says zero less than equal to page fault probability P less than equal to one. So when paging scheme is implemented sometime or somewhere page fault is going to happen, right? So when the mem main memory is getting full, a lot of pages are being swapped between the main memory and secondary storage. So if certain page is not there in the main memory, a page fault is gonna occur, right? Which means that the page fault probability is gonna be between zero and one. So point number two is the effective access time EAT. So EAT or effective access time is the time required to access a particular memory address to access a particular page. And the formula is given by EAT is equal to one minus P. So P is the probability of page fault happening. So one minus P is gonna be the probability of page fault not happening into memory access. That is, we got the page plus P into that is the probability of page fault happening into page fault overload or overhead. So whenever a page fault happens, we have to go through step number two, three, four, five, and six, right? And whenever a page fault doesn't happen, we can directly jump from step number one to step number six, right? So this page fault overhead is the extra time required whenever a page fault happens to perform this step number two, step number three, step number four, step number five, and step number six. Okay. So this is that page fault overload or overhead. So depending on all these details, we have a question. Let's say the memory access time is hundred milliseconds. So in general, the time required to access memory is hundred milliseconds. The page fault service overhead is 10 milliseconds. So whenever a page fault happens, 10 milliseconds are required extra. And the third detail is one access causes page fault out of 10, which means that the probability indirectly is given as one by 10. Okay. So they're saying that out of 10 memory accesses, one time a page fault happens. So indirectly they've given us a probability only, right? So using this formula of EAT, we can say that EAT is equal to one minus P. So we know P is one by 10, which is 0 0.1. So this is 0 0.1. So one minus 0 0.1 into 
the memory access so they already have given memory access time which is 100 and this is in milliseconds it can be in nanoseconds or microseconds so make sure you do the conversions properly and get all these values in one single unit so then we have plus probability which is 0 0.1 into page fault overload which is 10 milliseconds so 0 0.1 into 10 so solving this further we have 1 minus 0 0.1 which is 0 0.9 into 100 plus 0 0.1 into 10 so 0 0.1 into 10 is going to be 1 and 0 0.9 into 100 is going to be 90 so ultimately 90 plus 1 is going to be 91 milliseconds so this is the final answer so EAT in this question is going to be 91 milliseconds okay so I hope you have understood the entire concept of page fault and page fault handling and we also saw a numerical as well as the entire working diagram of page fault handling so lastly I just wanted to talk about the concept of thrashing so what exactly is thrashing so let me just read out this theory and you'll easily understand so after completing initialization most programs operate on a small number of code and data pages compared to the total memory the program requires so what this point is saying is whenever you first time load a program it takes a lot of time right so when you initiate or when you start a program there are a lot of things that are started and there are a lot of processes and background tasks required to initiate a program however once you start the program only a small number of code or only a small number of processes are running in the background right so take an example of a very high intensive graphic game so when you start that game initially you see a loading screen which takes a lot of time right but once the game is loaded everything runs smoothly so this you can make some analogy to this point now the pages most frequently accessed are called working set so the most frequently run processes in the background for a particular application and the pages that are most frequently accessed for those processes are called as working set so when the working set is small percentage of the system's total number of pages virtual memory system works most efficiently and an ins insignificant amount of computing is spent resolving page faults so what they are saying is if your ram this so this is ram has very small amount of this working set of pages so there won't occur a lot of page faults right so this is the virtual memory vm and this is the physical memory ram so when this working set is small there won't occur a lot of page faults because there won't be pages being swapped between virtual memory and ram but as the working set grows so as the ram gets filled up with all these working set pages some pages are being transferred to the virtual memory and then when they are required back again they are brought back into the ram so as the working set grows resolving page faults remains manageable until the growth reaches a critical point so this page faults happen again and again as the working set grows okay so as the ram fills up with working set pages there is a lot of swapping of pages which is a lot of page faults is happening and as the faults go up dramatically time spent to resolve this faults overwhelms the time spent on the computing and this condition is referred as thrashing so when thrashing happens the entire system slows down and basically thrashing happens when a lot of pages are being swapped between the ram that is between the physical memory and the virtual memory so this is what thrashing is in very simple terms okay so you can read out this theory you can note these points if you are preparing your answers but essentially what thrashing is is that it is uncontrolled swapping of pages between the virtual memory and ram because of page faults so yeah this was the last topic i wanted to cover about in page fault and page fault handling so that's it for this video guys i hope you understood the concept of page fault what is a page fault how do we resolve a page fault and then we also saw a small numerical as well as the diagram and lastly we saw what is thrashing and understood what exactly happens in thrashing so thanks for watching guys if you like this video please give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and if you haven't subscribed on this channel make sure you subscribe so that you get notified whenever i upload a new video on this channel thanks for watching guys i'll see you guys in the next video peace